Bonjour ou bonsoir chers participants et bienvenue à ce webinaire. Euh, au mois de février dernier, euh, nous avons organisé un événement pareil euh, à Radio Rurale Internationale, c'était à l'occasion de la journée internationale de la radio et je suis sûre que vous êtes nombreux à vous en souvenir. Et pendant cet événement, euh, nous étions là non seulement pour célébrer la radio comme un outil très intéressant, mais aussi pour attribuer les prix de communication de George Atkins, le fondateur de Radio Rurale Internationale, et le prix Liz Hutch pour Radio Rurale au féminin. Et c'était un prix qui avait pour objectif de célébrer euh, nos femmes, les femmes radiodiffuseuses à travers le monde. Oui, et cet après-midi encore, nous sommes là pour un séminaire intitulé « Amplifier les voix des femmes pour la sécurité alimentaire et l'égalité des genres » encore organisé par Radio Rurale Internationale, et ce, pour présenter les résultats de l'un de nos projets. Et euh, juste pour votre information, ce webinaire se déroulera dans une combinaison de langues, en français et en anglais, avec une traduction simultanée, bien sûr. Et pour activer la traduction, vous avez juste à regarder au bas de votre écran et à cliquer le bouton qui dit « Interprétation ». Donc là, vous sélectionnez la langue de votre choix. Ce sera soit l'anglais, soit le français, et vous entendrez dans cette langue. Donc, euh, merci beaucoup euh, de le faire, si vous êtes déjà en train de le faire. Et euh, juste encore pour votre information, ce sera un webinaire qui se déroulera pendant 90 minutes. Et pendant ce temps, euh, nous okay. aurons... Hi, everyone. Uh, this is uh, Clementina. I will be doing the interpretation. If you have uh, already chosen your room, we are now uh, listening to the instructions uh, for choosing uh, the translation room. So for if you have any questions, you can uh, um, press on the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen to interact with us and ask questions. This webinar is being uh, recorded, so you'll be able to uh, find it on our YouTube uh, page and our Facebook page and, our, and also on our website if you would like also to uh, vision uh, the webinar afterwards. And if you have uh, friends that have a hard time to join us, uh, we are also uh, having a live uh, recording on uh, Facebook, or you can also, uh, where you can also connect yourself. And so now I am going to start to present the first um, present presenter of this webinar. She is a member uh, of the uh, board of FRI, uh, Farm Radio International, and her name is uh, Nora Young. And I think I'm going to uh, introduce uh, her with more detail uh, in English. English. Uh, Nora is the host and the creator of SPRAC, uh, CBC's national radio show and podcast about technology and culture. And as a journalist, 
author and speaker, Nora explores how new technology shapes the way we understand ourselves and the world around us. So I'm welcoming here uh, Nora Yo for our introduction word. Hi, Nora. Hi, merci beaucoup, Martin. Merci beaucoup. I'd like to begin uh, with a land acknowledgement. Today, I'm speaking to you from my home in downtown Toronto. It's on the treaty lands and territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit and the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, the Wendat, and the Haudenosaunee. This land is within the Dish with One Spoon territory, an agreement between the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabe and allied nations to peaceably share and care for the land. Today, Toronto is home to many First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. I'm grateful to live and work on this land. Moreover, Farm Radio International's Canadian office is located in what is now Ottawa, on the unceded, unsurrendered territory of the Anishinaabe Algonquin Nation, whose presence there reaches back to time immemorial. We give this land acknowledgement today because it is part of a history of colonization that has happened on this continent, but the legacies of colonialism are not limited to Canada and this land. It is those same legacies that have resulted in the work that we are doing and talking about today. I'm delighted to be here today and I'm excited to find out more about what's been learned through this project. And just to be clear, I'm not here representing the CBC. I'm here in my capacity as a volunteer member of the board of Farm Radio International, an organization I'm honored to be part of and which I've learned an enormous amount from. But I am a journalist, a radio broadcaster and a technology writer. So scaling her voice brings together a number of themes that are really dear to my heart and important to me. First of all, as a journalist, I value getting good quality information in accessible formats so that people can use that information to improve their lives. That is key. The term empowering probably gets overused these days, but getting good information about agriculture and nutrition and discussions about gender from and with people in the community is empowering. As journalists, we want the work we do, the people we talk to, the stories we cover to be meaningful in people's actual lives, to give people the tools so that they can use them to thrive. Second, as a radio broadcaster, one of the things I think about is how to get a range of perspectives and different voices on air so that we're not just hearing from the same people all the time, so that we can start genuine conversation. And that involves more than just not excluding people, it can mean finding out how to facilitate people who may be less likely to participate for whatever reason and supporting them. And finally, as a technology journalist, one of the things I really love is the power of technologies to connect people and to facilitate peer-to-peer -peer learning and peer-to-peer -peer connection. And this is something that Farm Radio does in its work in general. It brings together the nimble, inexpensive and responsive, venerable medium of radio, which I love, together with the latest innovative digital tools to further that connection. And what we see here with this project is work aimed at designing with women, aimed at women supporting each other through community listening groups and in women using radio and interactive tools to step into the public discourse on gender, as well as on issues related to agriculture and food security. And finally, as a woman on air myself, I find it inspiring to learn about the participants in this project. As a woman in tech, I know how powerful it can be to use technologies to communicate and to really scale her voice. And I look forward to hearing more about the project and how we can use the lessons learned here in future projects. So I'm going to turn it back over to Martine for more. Thank you. Merci. Thank you so much, Nora, for this warm opening. Uh, now, I want to introduce here Caroline Montpetit, Head of Project Implementation and Gender Equality Advisor at Farm Radio International, who will tell us more about the project, scaling her voice, the strategies, and some key results. Dear participants, I want to reassure you, as the webinar is going on, uh, will be flowing, you'll be more inspired, as Nora just said. So. You have just to stay tuned. Hi, Caroline. Oui, bonjour. Bonjour tout le monde et merci. Hi, everyone. And uh, thank you, Martin and Nora, for this presentation. So we are here today 
uh, to talk about the results, but also the uh, lessons that we have learned uh, that we have learned uh, in a project uh, that we have learned from the Women's Voices project at scale on the importance also of information and communication uh, platforms to better serve rural communities at scale and how to address the gender equality issues using ICTs. Uh, we're also going uh, to talk uh, about um, and how we can have those approaches on the long term. So a uh, very uh, fundamental uh, goal, um, but often overlooked uh, in rural development is the lack of quality and gender sensitive information, communication and extension services. And even better if these services can address issues related to gender equality equality in a comprehensive way. If we don't have access to the right information in real time and in a way that takes our reality into consideration, consideration especially as women, it would be difficult to make the right decisions about our well-being that our family and that of our family and of our community. ICT and radio can offer an opportunity to meet this need, but it's not that simple. Although radio is one of the best tools to reach marginalized communities with essential information, uh, it remains a largely male dominated medium and has the potential to perpetuate stereotypes. It's, it's really a question of how information is offered and what type of information, but also how the social cultural context and the challenges um, in which we are and also the challenges of gender inequalities can prevent women from benefiting from information. So not only do we have to offer the right information in an accessible way to women, we also have to think about challenging the social cultural norms that prevent women from making changes and ideally being able to share their perspectives in return. So it is in this context that we implemented a five-year project with funding from um, uh, uh, Global, Affair, uh, Global uh, Affairs Canada, which aimed to improve food security and gender equality in Mali, Burkina Faso, Ghana, and Senegal. So in those four countries. And to meet this need, uh, or this need of communication and information that we have uh, facilitated a collaboration with local radio stations, radio stakeholders, and rural communities to create interactive radio platforms um, to really uh, provide support to local radio stations on offering the best uh, farmer radio programs in a way that meaningful, meaningfully engage women as well as men. And so we want to make sure that they have access to coaching, to training, and so that they have the best uh, version of their agricultural uh, radio programs and also to engage in a participative, participative way uh, the communities, but especially women, and to be able to talk about gender equality issues. So we also in, uh, mobilize with rural stakeholders, including women's organizations, so that they can share their knowledge with the radio to improve the content, but also uh, know how to use radio to amplify the strategy and get real-time feedback from rural communities. Uh, to better understand their needs and priorities and also uh, support them, mainly, uh, mainly women at using ICT to engage in the dialogues. So these are the three um, with the idea to offer them the right information to improve their uh, knowledge uh, in uh, food, secu food security and nutrition, but also in gender equality and agriculture, and so that they have the right information so that they can, they can um, apply changes to their lives. So we work with a big amount of radio stations. Uh, we had uh, 21 radio station, uh, partner radio station that produced and broadcasted um, 1,600 interactive radio programs covering an audience of over 4.3 million people. Um, we also uh, collaborated with another uh, 52 other radio stations, even if we, even though we didn't support them in terms of training and production of the radio programs, we shared with them the learnings, uh, some resources, so that they could have access to tools to improve their programming. And uh, we uh, 
and with that uh, we were able to reach uh, uh, 10.5 million people and we were able to do a, a final uh, survey at the end and we we were very happy to see that there was a positive impact uh, on in terms of uh, food security and so at the end of the project we saw a decrease um, a decrease of uh, food insecure people uh, by 25%. So this comes from a collaboration work that we have done with the different actors, uh, local actors in uh, in their uh, fight for uh, food, uh, in their fight in, uh, food, in food security. According to our empowerment index, the gender gap has shrunk from 25% to, to 19%. So this gap uh, decreased from uh, 25 to 19% in the uh, final evaluation. And also communities perceived an improved level of food security and gender equality. At the end of the project, we estimated that there were 1.3 million people that applied good agricultural and nutritional practices that were discussed uh, on air, and also 1.5 million people uh, that applied transformative good practices in terms of gender equality. Linked to women involved in household decision making and in relation uh, to land, also the distribution of tasks within the household and the use of telephones by women. So there is a, a few uh, uh, strategies uh, that were used in this project. Uh, one of them is uh, the uh, technologies accessible at lower cost. So actually radio and telephone and uh, telephone make it uh, possible to mobilize a large number of people. But this requires strategies to support communities in using them and benefiting from them. The project was also uh, uh, focused on dialogues. So, so we have used various radio formats like radio theater or magazines, but essentially every show, every program was designed to engage in dialogue between communities and experts so that they could interact between each other uh, on air. The goal was uh, uh, for these shows to also be a space for self-expression. Um, the idea was also to see how we could um, reach millions of people with our approaches. And at the end, it was an uh, integrative participatory approach. And so for us, uh, a big success, success of the project is that we, uh, the, the importance was really to share women's voice so that they can influence programs, their content, and indirectly also the interventions of actors in their communities. Um, and inspire other women as security uh, leaders, as leaders in a full security. Thank you, Caroline, for your brilliant intervention. We, will, we have to say that for a project that lasted uh, five years and that was uh, implemented in four countries, uh, 90, minutes, 90 minutes is not enough uh, to really show all the work that we have done on the field and even the results that we have, uh, 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 that we got, but it's okay. We are going to talk and we're going to have a conversation. And for those that want to know uh, more at the end, we are going to give you the contact of uh, FRI, Farm Radio International. And I uh, also want to say uh, hi and welcome to those that just join us. Maybe in the uh, chat, you can put your name, your country and uh, where you are located right now. We are going to now continue with uh, Caroline Montpetit that I introduced earlier, because uh, she is now going to have a conversation with uh, two women, fascinating women that contributed um, uh, to the project, uh, amplifying women's voices uh, through uh, radio programs and on air. So Caroline, I am going to keep the suspense, uh, the, uh, uh, and I'm going to let you introduce uh, the, this uh, woman. Yes, thank you. So uh, just uh, uh, just an uh, introduction uh, before I start uh, exchanging with uh, those um, I guess. This project has demonstrated that information and communication um, 
technologies, including radio, can be fundamental in challenging inequal social norms and contributing to the investment of women's rights. Um, this project gave us the opportunity to develop new approaches and test the implementation to do so. Uh, so this uh, asks us to think and to go a bit further than the normal radio programs, but also how do we work? And so for us, uh, 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 one of the learnings is the collaboration with uh, the women's organization and uh, those that are uh, centered on uh, gender uh, equality. And we have mobilized uh, 41 women's organization or organizations working on gender equality to be part of the regional consultation uh, framework. Uh, they were part of the training on the use of interactive radio uh, uh, and we also offered them uh, training on how they could use the radio interactive radio in the interventions and so uh, how can we be of service to these groups another uh, uh, element that is uh, crucial is women's voice um, for us we have used an approach that was her voice on air that was elaborated uh, earlier and tested and that we had uh, we had reinforced and uh, put in scale for this project but here is to really accompany women to uh, speak um, uh, and to give them opportunities to uh, interact but also to accompany them in the process in the process of using these technologies and how they can talk on radio so that they are uh, comfortable and how to create links with the community Another uh, key element for us was the capacity building of uh, partners on gender equality. So of course, uh, we offer a training in our interventions uh, with our partner radio station, but here we also developed a specific training on how to ensure uh, women's participation in the radio programs and also how to talk about uh, gender equality issues because that also uh, needs a lot of uh, reflection from the uh, partner radio station and a lot of practice and a lot of uh, training. And also another element, if we want to do a, a, a efficient uh, project, uh, we also have to look at how we work ourselves uh, within ourselves. So that's how we talk, we're talking about the, the institutionalization of uh, gender equality. Uh, how do we work? What's the capacity of our staff? Um, and how uh, to uh, move with training and analysis and how uh, does FRI uh, talk about those issues. It's a project that has enabled us to achieve interesting results. And before I talk about our, uh, with our guests and our um, staff um, and some colleagues, apologies, um, we measured, uh, we are going, I'm going to present a few results. So we measured the evolution of certain indicators forming an index of women's empowerment and including participation in decision-making, uh, land ownership, uh, also attitudes toward gender-based violence and uh, women's rights, confidence in uh, themselves, um, access to information and the possibility of expressing one, uh, oneself uh, publicly. And so we were able to see, uh, can we please change uh, the slide? Thank you. So the, we saw a reduction of inequalities uh, linked to the empowerment of a woman. Um, and it was a big effort uh, to uh, create uh, some of these um, slides. We also have measured the perception um, and attitudes related to gender equality. And at the uh, uh, final evaluation, we saw that 53% of respondents um, gave uh, desired answers, questions related to perceptions and attitudes about gender equality. And finally, we also saw an increase, uh, important increase of a woman in women's participation in certain uh, programs. So at the beginning, we had a participation of 10% and 10% and at the end, we were at 55%. And this was a very important indicator for us to see uh, that if we offer a space uh, for women to use technology and we, if we offer a space uh, for women to have a dialogue in the community that can really give us results. Of course, we have to understand that the, there is um, still some challenges uh, especially in terms of technology. Um, and that's a very important uh, um, 
challenge and to talk about it today, we are lucky to have uh, Françoise Koulibaly with us. Uh, she's a journalist and radio host at Radio Voix de Ballet in Burkina Faso, and uh, who uh, is, which is a, a Farai partner uh, for five years now. So, Françoise, I hope you can hear us. Uh, yes, uh, hi, uh, Caroline. So, uh, with our collaboration with uh, in uh, scaling her voice, we uh, wanted to uh, accompany women in different ways so that we could hear their voice, and especially when it's talking about uh, very sensitive uh, topics uh, like gender-based violence or others. Uh, I wanted to know how did you do it? Uh, how did you go and get uh, woman's, uh, the woman's voice? Uh, first, uh, hi, everyone. Um, and thank you for the opportunity uh, um, to give me uh, the voice and, how, and to share my experience with FRI and especially with this project, Scaling Her Voice. So it's very simple uh, during the uh, implementation of the radio programs. We had to work with uh, listening, uh, community listening groups. And when we uh, were putting in place those listening groups, we had to do uh, a very detailed work uh, to, uh, to bring awareness uh, to women uh, about what he, why they should actually express themselves uh, and talk about those violences that, are, that they actually face. And they are the best people uh, to talk about the solutions to really get out of those situations. And with women, when we talk about their children, they become very sensitive and they are uh, really uh, ready for anything. And so this this could have a very uh, positive impact on the children because they are going to contribute to change. They are going to contribute to make sure that their children uh, do not uh, suffer from the same violences or same difficulties that they live, uh, that they go through today. And without also forgetting the participation of men, we also had to convince them because uh, whatever we say uh, in Africa is a bit more complicated. A woman uh, are always dependent on a man. And so we had to convince them that it could actually um, uh, uh, release a bit uh, all, the, all the stresses that uh, they had, that men had, and really to bring also And to to show him that uh, it could help him to uh, solve a solution to solve problems that he uh, would have with his families, if uh, if a uh, woman could express themselves and participate. And I would be also interested to, to know how. Um, how listeners reacted uh, to the radio programs. Uh, we know that uh, some radio programs maybe were about uh, very uh, typical uh, uh, or uh, traditional uh, topics, um, but maybe those were different, maybe um, more sensitive. So uh, what was the reaction from listeners? And when you were going on the field and you were interacting with your listeners, uh, what are the changes that you uh, saw? So at uh, first, they really uh, thought it was uh, it was a very um, um, uh, interesting, and the participation was uh, quite uh, was very much uh, based on women. But after that, it was very positive uh, in the way that the participation increased uh, very positively. And I can also say that the impact could be seen uh, right away on the field because uh, I'm going to now uh, share a success story. Uh, so uh, Madame Koulibaly that live five kilometers uh, from a uh, uh, town um, does is not part of a community listening groups, but came to us and said, okay, we have, at first we had two topics that really impacted uh, positively her life. And she said that it was, uh, 
so it was about uh, the uh, so how to manage uh, how to manage uh, the earnings of uh, the sale and so so her husband uh, was forcing her to uh, do some uh, farming uh, some garden farming but some gardening but uh, today she has the uh, the choice actually between uh, chicken farming um, and now her revenues are more stable because uh, she was able to choose and she does the work better because she chose. And secondly, um, for the farming, uh, the amount to be uh, set, to be uh, sold, she is the one actually that decides, she is the one that goes to the market to sell. And also the revenues that she uh, brings back, uh, the husband, gives her the flexibility to manage as best as she can. And so uh, this is how uh, the impact uh, the impact of those radio stations on the community. I know that is not uh, the only uh, example, uh, but this is uh, the one that we were able, uh, able to see. Thank you. And with all the efforts that we uh, uh, that we uh, had uh, to uh, listen to a uh, woman's voice uh, can you um, can you tell me uh, how it looked like uh, first of all uh, they appreciated this opportunity to express themselves and it was really uh, genuine because often when you talk to women they are a bit uh, uh, they they really look uh, look out for the words that they actually uh, say um, or speak, but here they were behind the mic and they were talking. Uh, really, they were really saying what they think, and that would that was allowing us also to uh, to guide our program because we see their needs, we hear their needs, and so to make sure that they uh, that they uh, could find what they needed in the information that we were providing. And uh, for you, uh, Francoise, as a woman in radio, we are not going to, um, to hide it. It's a bit uh, rare, still too rare in Burkina Faso and in Sub-Saharan Africa in general to hear women on radio. Uh, how has this project changed the way you and your radio, your radio station uh, um, does radio while serving women? So before the radio programs for this project, I was doing uh, more uh, hosting than reporting and uh, documentaries. But with these radio programs, I was it was really the opportunity for me and the beautiful opportunity to, for me to express myself. And so it was on topics that, topics about women. And so I was concerned, I was feeling concerned and that really motivated me, uh, that allowed me uh, to really um, do my job with passion because I could recognize myself in that uh, topic, especially because at the radio station, I was the only uh, woman and uh, and only God knows all the challenges that I faced, um, whether there were real difficulties or maybe just my mind playing tricks on me. But those uh, those uh, radio programs they made me uh, really uh, get out of my shell and express myself. And so today, the fact to express myself like this, I'm not saying that a man in the radio station. They have their results, but I know that I know that today, for example, my director knows that I am productive, that I am efficient, uh, and that uh, when uh, when the when women are motivated and when they want, they can also be productive and efficient. And so uh, this really motivated us to hear more uh, a woman's voice on the radio. Uh, um, when we are talking about women's topic and we have a, a woman presenting it is different and uh, 
it allows us today to be two women on the radio uh, and i think it's a really good uh, a really good debate uh, and i think that's a result from uh, uh, the radio program uh, scaling her voice on air thank you so much Françoise. and today we also have uh, with us alimata konate she is our team lead for uh, digital innovation and she's also based in Burkina Faso and I am uh, uh, very lucky to collaborate with her since many years now, especially uh, for the implementation of uh, Scaling Her Voice project and Alima is also our focal point for gender equality in Burkina Faso and she really contributed actively to adapt our approaches uh, to the needs of women. Hi Alima. Hi, Caroline. Hi, everyone. Alima, uh, so uh, the idea uh, with uh, those uh, um, communication and information platform is not just to ensure uh, to have access to the inf key information, but it's also to save as a space for women to express themselves. Um, we know that uh, it's two things that women can express themselves, but it's, uh, it's another thing for women to really participate to the radio programs. Um, and really uh, get that opportunity. Uh, we both know that it's one thing to say we want women on the show, but it's another thing to make sure they can actually seize the opportunity to do so. Can you give me examples of the challenges women face in using technology and what FRA has done to support women? So for uh, this uh, project, we had a few approaches and there is also the Ulisa platform that was, uh, that will allow us to do uh, interactive uh, polls uh, within the communities and that will allow us to collect the data but to use this data uh, you have to use uh, the phones and so we saw at the beginning um, at the beginning of the year the programs that the uh, uh, participation of women it was uh, very very low and so we had a, a reflection, uh, some thinking. We worked with the radio station and even talked with the listening community listening groups and see how we can uh, improve that. And uh, some of the challenges that we saw uh, was uh, uh, how to use the tools, the access to the tool itself. That was a challenge. A woman that don't have access uh, to the tools uh, they can use uh, the, the phone of their husband uh, to participate, for example. There is also the use of the uh, radio themselves, the radio machine itself, and also um, these challenges. With these challenges, we didn't have a lot of interactions on the Ulisa platform. It was 90% uh, men. And when we started to uh, work on those challenges, we developed some approaches. And uh, one of the approaches, it, uh, it was called uh, Lisa Ambassador, and it was a, a, a game to really motivate and incentivize a woman to participate. And so with this, uh, we encourage women to participate, to listen uh, the radio programs. And at the end of the series, there were they could actually win something um, and uh, that ambassador would actually go on the on air and encourage other women to participate we also realized uh, some uh, some some discussions with women so that uh, they can also interact with the server and uh, show other women how to do it when women uh, we realized also that there was not a lot of uh, contact and so we tried to uh, diagnose uh, and uh, see what was the problem we realized that women that had smartphones uh, they couldn't actually uh, show uh, the number on the screen uh, and so we integrated some elements uh, of learning in uh, in those uh, promotions into those promo spots uh, so that we could face those challenges and those are the challenges that we faced with our communities. Uh, something else is also the literacy literacy rate. A lot of women in our communities uh, were not lucky uh, to um, get an education. And for 
me personally, I never thought that it could actually be a problem to uh, write a number on the phone. It was uh, during a session with one of the radio station uh, that this, when we decided uh, to do a test, we uh, we saw that actually women, they were uh, taking the paper from their uh, purses and um, to be able to uh, write the number on the phone. And they know, uh, they actually do not know uh, the numbers. And so, um, and so there was someone in the community that had the idea to write the numbers on the on a paper and to share with the community listening groups. And so they have actually that paper in their purse. And when it's time to participate, they look at the they look at the paper and what is the drawing, uh, and so for example, if it's 70, 70, um, 70 20, 20, uh, that's they will follow uh, the drawing um, on the paper. So that's how they will be able to actually write the number on the phone. And so we realized that they would. Uh, the, with time, uh, they uh, were more confident and they were more comfortable and uh, they were able to uh, share uh, their uh, challenges, the challenges that they were facing as women uh, in the communities and to, um, and to uh, share their perspectives. And this data allowed uh, the, um, the radio station to produce uh, specific uh, radio programs uh, that will uh, on uh, those uh, gender issues it's really interesting to hear how the communities uh, would be would mobilize to uh, accompany women and to put uh, the number on a, a paper uh, maybe it's something that we would have not thought about at the beginning uh, but um, if we want women to participate, we really have to go to the base and what is not allowing them to participate. Animata, you, you are a woman, uh, you are specialized in technology. Uh, there's not a lot of you. Uh, and I know that you also faced a lot of challenges. What do you want to tell uh, those development organization, how we can all work together to bridge this gender-based uh, digital divide. What are those lessons that you want to share with us? So it's true that um, there is a lot of uh, elements uh, that uh, stop a woman to participate in the society. And a lot of them are on stereotypes. Uh, and if we take our experience in scaling her voice and how do we proceed at the beginning, I didn't have a lot of, we were not aware of a lot of things, but with time, uh, we, uh, we had inclusive approaches. We developed, how to say, um, we developed uh, strategies to to uh, for them to participate uh, and to uh, bridge those uh, barriers, even the financial constraints. Uh, we never thought about how uh, it was hard for a woman to have financial resources to recharge the uh, phone to be able to call. And so uh, taking into account all those elements, it, it helped us to actually adjust. Uh, For me, ICTs, it's an opportunity. It can really contribute to gender equality and especially about uh, uh, those uh, 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 digital uh, bridge. And uh, this is a reason why a woman have a hard time with uh, technology because we have illiterate. Uh, uh, the lack of literacy, the stereotypes, uh, and if the organizations, they actually work on those elements, they uh, go to the communities, they collect data on the real worries, why it's like this, and develop strategies that, uh, that can be uh, adapted uh, because uh, to, which to which community they, are, they, they have their own realities. For me, so that we can uh, go to the end of these challenges, it's really important to have an inclusive approach. 
and that we uh, work on those uh, barriers or those challenges that uh, stop a woman to adapt to those digital solutions and even to have access to those uh, tools. So to encourage them and to motivate uh, the uh, uh, younger ones to be uh, to have more confidence and to share uh, the history um, to the, the the stories of women that uh, that uh, were successful uh, in those domains even when we we're talking about uh, 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 Lisa ambassador the woman that was chosen as the ambassador they motivate other women because they can see oh okay she was able to do it there's also the good practices uh, uh, with the success stories of women that actually manage with those tools. When we share, it really motivates them. We had a lot of uh, cases, a lot of examples um, during the implementation of the project that showed us how, that when we uh, reach them, when we, um, when we, um, we go to them, uh, we are able to really um, face a lot of challenges. And there are some radio stations that actually had a higher participation of women compared to men. Uh, and the content of, 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 of women, what they were sharing was really rich in information. There were a lot of uh, taboo topics that they were able to talk about uh, through the platforms because uh, also because the uh, digital platforms, they were giving her a, a bit of uh, security. So all those elements, all the elements, uh, taking, into, uh, taking into account all those challenges of their needs uh, that allowed us to contribute. So I think for me, the organizations, they should really work more to, to adopt uh, inclusive approaches and to implement uh, those uh, measures incentivize uh, a woman and even offer training. Uh, we are we're able to do that also uh, to a women's group and even between themselves, then they go and train each other. So uh, this is really uh, the domain uh, of the communities, the rural communities uh, of this woman. And today we see that when when there is this uh, support, there is a change. A woman are able to sell even with their phones. Uh, on. So, <laughs> it was a beautiful uh, experience uh, scaling her voice. It really changed my uh, view uh, on, on access uh, on that uh, digital bridge and also uh, on how with small actions, we, we were able to reinforce the confidence of women and even encourage other women, especially uh, for me, uh, in the uh, implementation of the project when I was going to women, it was easier for me to do some trainings because it was inspiring them and they were uh, feeling uh, there were some trust maybe it would be it would have been different if it was uh, uh, if it was with a man um, that would have done if it was a man who would have done the training so when sorry i am a bit lost in my ideas there is a lot of information uh, uh, on those themes and i'm very passionate Yes, I was going to see you. We can uh, see the passion. So, uh, thanks to Francoise and Alima, uh, we can see the importance uh, for us to, to work on a strategy to support women. And uh, through this project, we see the opportunity we had to follow and support women. Thank you. Thanks, Caroline. Thanks to Alima and thanks to Alim, uh, Francoise Koulibaly and uh, for your inspiring experiences. And uh, through your daily work, 
at FRI and uh, the concerns you have. Uh, you are working to sustain uh, everything you are doing with women. One of our main concerns uh, as part of our project is to ensure that uh, we are ensuring the sustainability of the outcomes we are getting through the projects. And Caroline, with another discussion we had with other colleagues from FRI, uh, we are trying to see what are the other different strategies we are putting into place in the various countries. And at the end of the webinar, we will have a discussion with the head of specialty services, who is Adeinka Oyinka, and we will see how uh, we are working on the sustainability component of our activities. So we already have uh, some comments and questions in the chat room and uh, people from Mali, Rwanda and other parts of the continent are reacting. And I think by the end of the webinar, we will see how to react and give you some answers to your concerns. Thanks a lot, Martin. So as far as sustainability is concerned, so we will try to see what are the assets we have got throughout this project and how we have been able to take into account and meet the needs of the communities with whom we have worked with. So we also take some time to see how we manage to get these assets. And this was done through some programs uh, based on specific topics. And we men make sure which kind of value uh, the stakeholders uh, involved in the uh, development of this program for these uh, beneficiaries who would contribute to the success of uh, these contents we were proposing. So as a first part, uh, for us, uh, the sustainability component uh, aimed to uh, cultivate uh, three aspects. The first one was to make sure that the interactive radio services would be uh, keep on uh, being offered so that uh, to take into account uh, the agricultural and nutritional needs uh, and of the communities and make sure this is where done uh, in a equal basis. And in turn that uh, to make sure that the audience uh, remain faithful and keep uh, listening to uh, these programs. And also another aspect was at the institutional level. How could these uh, innovative programs keep being proposed by the radio which worked with us throughout the project? And we could make sure also they had all the necessary tools to make to be the leaders at the at these levels and keep uh, moving on with uh, local initiatives uh, by being uh, supported by local stakeholders. And also we needed to make sure that uh, they had uh, sustainability uh, at uh, the financial level. So uh, in this regard for the financial sustainability, we need some uh, uh, platforms uh, as much as the uh, private uh, uh, level is concerns. So before making sure we have a sustainable platform, we needed to create an environment and make sure we all have the condition, the necessary conditions in place. For that, how to make sure that our partners and our stakeholders have all the required knowledge to support our beneficiaries. In this regard, we needed to uh, build the capacities of the radio stations. And uh, in this regard, we made sure that uh, 17 radio stations were had, had their capacity, capacities built. And also uh, we gave them some tools to have a faithful audiences 
and this required some investment to be done regarding the audience. And another thing, we made sure to provide uh, our radio stations with was uh, to put into place what we called uh, the Green Leaf magazine. And this magazine was produced and had at uh, a high level. This was a great success for us because this concept was uh, really uh, supported through uh, our stakeholders. So now I am going to switch to English. Um, so one of our guests today is, is my colleague, Rosemann Ohene, as she is our program manager for the Ghana office. And Rosemann has been instrumental in implementing uh, this project in the first few years of its implementation in Ghana and uh, developing key partnerships with food security and gender equality stakeholders in the country. So hi, Rosemann, and welcome. Thank you, Caroline, and thank you everyone for having me. Um, Rosemary, can you talk to us about how did you engage with stakeholders in Ghana to support those information and com communication platforms? What kind of stakeholders did we work with? Okay, so um, thanks for explaining into details the various sustainability models that we have or approaches that we have. Um, Working in Ghana for quite some time, um, we always had pro projects come in and go, and we get into communities and people are so interested in our in our programs on radio, and then all of a sudden we we end projects, and so they can't listen to us anymore. So as part of the work that we did with this particular project was to have a sustainable communication platform. Um, we actually engaged stakeholders in both formal and informal ways. Um, formal ways by signing memorandum of understanding with some of the stakeholders, such as the Ministry of Food and Agri at the national level, and also with the regional and then the district department of agriculture, both at the regional and the district level. We worked with some universities, University of Cape Coast and University of Energy and Natural Resources. We also worked with some agri-businesses. Um, and then one of our most important partners, the radio stations. The reason is that after we've had this communication platform established, there's no way we can do anything without their help or without them collaborating with us. So with the radio stations, mostly it was through um, agreements, um, which spanned actually beyond the length of the project. And then we had them. Um, I can tell you, we still have some of them still broadcasting programs on Greenleaf as, um, as of now, even though projects ended. Um, last year. Um, we also worked with farmer-based organizations. Um, we, um, we engaged aggregators. And then as part of our stakeholders, we realized that we needed to work with the local um, government at the district assembly. And also we involved queen mothers. Reason is that um, you can't be saying that you want to deal with women and leave them out because when you get to most of these communities, Queen mothers actually play a very important role. And once, whatever they say is what the women pick. And so we realized that in order to form a very good um, information and communication platform, we needed them to be part of it. So these are, and then we also worked with women's rights organizations like Ubuntu. Um, they actually helped us to shape the gender aspect of our radio programming um, by involving them in our design, radio program design workshops. So these are ways that we um, actually engaged some of these um, stakeholders that we worked with. So through radio program designs, through training, through the e-model where they did the self-assessment, um, we also shared our midterm evaluation results with them. We, before we actually closed out on these projects, we also shared our final evaluation results with them so they know how we fared and also how to move forward um, 
in the coming years if we still have radio stations broadcasting programs and how they can help. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, after working with the local radio stations and the communities themselves through those, those platforms, what are some of the key learnings that those stakeholder groups have shared with you about their understanding of the role of interactive radio in their work? Okay, so I would say that um, radio actually reaches a wider audience compared to like the face-to-face -face, um, interactions that normally exist, especially within the agricultural space. Um, through the radio program, um, the women are able to learn more. And before they actually, before stake, other stakeholders meet them in their various homes or on their farms, they have a fair idea on what they have to do. Um, I would like to talk about um, what the Bono East Regional Director for Agric so he said. Um, so I would want to quote him some way, somehow. Maybe I may not get him exactly the way he um, the way he said it, but then I probably would just paraphrase some of the things that he said. So in his own words, he said that the creation of the communication platform was very important and timely as it became the main source of sharing information with farmers and um, during the COVID um, period. Participating in the online training to understand how radio works was actually very fascinating for him and also an eye opener for him. Um, to him, it actually gave him and his colleagues within um, Agric the capacity to support radio stations more effectively. They actually had um, participated in radio programs, but they didn't know the depth to which programming comes on air. So this time around, after going through the trainings and everything, it gave them an insight and they were able to support radio stations more effectively and efficiently. So participating in the online training, um, he mentioned that um, helped him to build his capacity to support radio stations more efficiently to produce quality interactive radio program. The review of the results of the key stakeholder um, with the key stakeholder groups, especially the midterm evaluation, um, actually um, allowed the stakeholders to appreciate the skill and the kind of outcomes um, that we were able to achieve during the mid-year review um, of the project and also um, within the communication um, project space. So um, these are but a few of the examples. Um, for, for instance, the agri-input dealers who actually um, participated in the program um, also mentioned that they were, they were able to sell a lot and also it afforded them the opportunity to um, talk more or educate farmers about their product. And that actually helped build their brand and also help them to um, sell at large to a lot of farmers who didn't know about them and also wouldn't use their product. So these are but a few that I can talk about. Yeah, thank you very much, Rosman. Um, and maybe briefly, um, based on all of this work in Ghana, you were able to, to get some interesting financial support to keep those platforms going. Do you want to mention one or two things about that? Okay, so um, it was actually our first time um, getting into what we call the social franchise model. And in the beginning, we were contemplating how would this be? We are an NGO. How do we raise money? How do we go about it? Um, so the idea came for us to set up a business development unit. So we set up the business development unit where their sole mandate was getting into the world, like moving out there, talking to partners about what we do and how farmers have um, taken keen interest on the radio programs and how we don't want to leave when projects end, but then have a radio program that is more sustainable. So we had, especially the agribusinesses, and then later on, we had some NGOs coming in. So initially we had um, RMG, that was the first money that we got supporting us with some money. And then later on, when um, people began to realize the value that um, the radio program was bringing them, we had more um, agribusinesses and NGOs coming in to support the communication platform. Together, we were able to raise um, 55,000 Canadian dollars 
um, which I know is not too much, but then for us, it was actually a very, um, a very um, interesting opportunity for us to explore. And that is what we are currently working on with more businesses coming in and then helping to ensure that we have this um, pro, um, communication platform sustained over a very long time. So um, these were some of the financial contributions that we got and we, we haven't relented on what we did. We are still pushing hard to ensure that we have more coming in. And I must tell you this year, we have also done quite well um, with the business development team that we had and they've actually brought in some money. So we, we, we now have come to realize that we projects must not just end, but we always have to have that sustainability um, aspect towards it, where we speak to mm -hmm. other um, stakeholders who can probably not support like funding, like giving full amount, but probably supporting a segment of a radio program or um, supporting a radio program to a point. I must also give kudos to the radio stations because some cases we don't even get money at all, but they, they said, well, farmers have loved our program. People have loved our program. We can't just let go. We will continue to work. So we've had um, monies coming in from varied stakeholders. And this, I must say that um, I'll give it a plus to the project that just ended, which is the Scaling Hair Voice. That became the eye opener for us to actually um, know that we can, as an NGO, we can still make money or we can still get money to support projects that we do when they end. Thank you very much, Rosamond. This has been very interesting. Um, et, uh, I will now go back to speak in French. <laughs> OK. Donc, ces contributions de Rosemary so, nous vraiment à comprendre tous les différents... All these contributions help us know that uh, we have many tools we can uh, take uh, and uh, use for our projects and uh, these can be uh, some kinds of things we can uh, put into place to support our radio stations so maimuna are you there uh, because we will try to see how we have been using it uh, in mali So do we have Maimuna with us? Oui, je vois que son micro est ouvert. Maimuna, est-ce que tu as choisi une salle d'interprétation? J'entends pas. Okay, donc ce que je propose, uh, on va continuer. I suggest that uh, uh, the discussion with Andeika before we come back to Maimuna to let her uh, settle her issue. So, um, hi Adeyanka, <laughs> can you hear us all right? Yes, certainly I can okay. hear you. Okay. Hello, everyone. Yeah. Okay, so Adeyanka Anikan um, recently joined Farm Radio International as the head of our specialty services. And Adeyanka is supporting us at thinking about how we can make those communication for development approaches more sustainable. Um, Adeyanka, you've been analyzing how we've been working. Uh, you've been um, working a lot with our colleagues in country offices to explore creative ways of addressing the issue of sustainability. How can we set the stage for those interventions to be uh, more sustainable in our sector? All right, thank you, Caroline. Um, let me say that the Green Leaf Platform's goal um, is to serve farming families with a consistent, dependable, and high quality radio program. And so when we talk about sustainability, um, from Farm Radio International perspective, we're looking at it 
around three areas, social, institutional, and financial. And when we say social, we are looking at the acceptability, relevance, ownership, and participation of people in rural communities. Um, essentially, we're saying they enjoy the radio program. And institutionally, we are saying that we have established network of local organizations that are providing support to ensure that these radio programs enjoy the benefits of subject matter specialists, um, farming, uh, producing organizations or private sector. And, and in terms of financial, we're looking at investments and sponsorship to ensure that these programs run beyond uh, grant life. And, and just like um, this, this, um, uh, the, the last speaker said, you know, when we have investments into this program, it ensures that these programs are sustainable. And, and so when we, we talk about sustainability, we are looking at it from the design phase of the project that we ensure that we bring all the necessary players and we look and ensure that these programs are designed in such a way that beyond the life of those programs, those programs are sustainable. And the idea of having a platform is that once we've built these structures on ground, we can therefore have different investors, different stakeholders, you know, put into these programs to ensure that the rural um, farming communities and people in rural areas have access to this quality radio programming. And even for the radio stations, just like we had in Ghana, the radio pro stations have realized that these are wonderful programs, these are enjoyable programs. And in, in, in that aspect, it also brings additional or more revenue to the radio program. So even the radio stations themselves take ownership of those programs. Thank you. Thanks, Alienka. Um, let me see if we can hear uh, Maimuna now. Um, Maimuna, est-ce que tu, uh, tu nous reçois bien? Oui, je vous reçois après. Yes! <laughs> Excellent. Alors, rebonjour, Maimuna. <laughs> Hi, Maimuna. Hi, Caroline. So we were just uh, discussing about the sustainability aspect of uh, our work, and uh, Adeinka were telling was telling us how we can do it. And uh, in Mali, uh, you were trying to see how to support uh, this component uh, of our work. Thanks, uh, Caroline. Uh, I can say that uh, in Mali, uh, the Scaling Her Voice project was a real success. I will start sharing a success story uh, with you because uh, this can uh, uh, let you know how we got uh, uh, great uh, results because uh, thanks uh, to uh, one of our uh, partnership, uh, we have been able to uh, work with a, an organization which were working with uh, uh, kids. And uh, in this regard, a leader of uh, this organization uh, asked us how we can uh, support uh, pregnant women and make sure that uh, their pregnancy uh, will be a success, a success up to the delivery. So, and also, uh, they wanted to know how we can produce uh, some uh, programs so that uh, we women can know how to prepare good food for their kids. In this regard, for the nutritional security, uh, with Scaling Her Voice project, we were able to provide uh, good information and also make sure that women know how to have good practices 
regarding how to feed their kids. We were also having a good uh, partnership with uh, gender uh, organization and uh, women rights organizations as part of uh, this project. So we also worked with the rural women associations federation uh, for the program designs we were supported by some uh, women listening group communities uh, in sikaso particularly speaking we had a two days training uh, which were funded by the community listening group themselves. And this uh, training were meant to train women on the use of uh, local materials. And another training uh, for the rural community association help us know what were the needs of these rural communities and also to know what were the challenges they were having. In this regard, we were supported by the Women Promotion Ministry. A side of our monitoring and evaluation activities uh, the empowerment department directors were present uh, to every design uh, workshop to provide us uh, with uh, relevant information as part of the content we could provide for the radio programs. Also, some other technical departments uh, uh, provided us uh, with uh, relevant information, including uh, the Ministry of uh, Justice and uh, the Ministry of uh, Land Property, for example. Other uh, associations were also uh, with us. We want uh, forget those, for example, the Chamber of Agriculture. All of these partners supported us with relevant information so that we could produce, for example, programs on market gardening. We won't forget the support from FRY with relevant trainings on how to make sure that uh, we include everyone in the programs which were aired and how to get uh, effective interaction. Thank you. From what we heard from you, this shows that uh, we really need to have uh, many partners and stakeholders uh, with us and also make sure that we provide all of these partners and also the beneficiaries of our projects with the tools they need to make sure they can implement the good practices we are proposing in the programs. So how were we able to make sure that our radio partners could change their practices in doing radio? So thank you uh, for our radio partners. As part of a Scaling Her Voice project, uh, we trained our radio partners how to get uh, relevant and reliable data so that uh, they can make sure they 
uh, radio programs are very interactive. So, the seven uh, radio stations we worked with have been able to increase their listenership. And also, thanks to the mapping they were able to have, the training helped them to go to uh, other partner uh, in the country to get more information to inform their content. They were also able to get uh, more innovative approaches. With the maga Greenleaf magazine format also, they are all now able to produce uh, more qualitative programs for their audience. So with this green leave format, uh, they have more segment uh, to offer to the listeners. For the community listening to these programs as part of the green leaf uh, approach magazine, uh, the listeners are now able to get more information to meet their needs. What we also observed is that after the Scaling Her Voice project, the seven radio stations are more professional now. So I think that uh, throughout uh, the Scaling Her Voice project, what we can see is that uh, uh, the radio stations are now able to provide programs which uh, uh, generate uh, more results and more impact for the listeners. Okay. Um, thank you so much, Caroline. Thank you so Merci much. Merci beaucoup. And uh, I think we are going to answer uh, straightforward uh, the questions that were asked in the chat. And uh, uh, each uh, uh, participant or uh, will have 30 seconds for his question or for the answer to the question. I think the first question goes directly uh, for Caroline. And the question comes from Lynn Kent with asking how does climate change impact your work? Uh, I, I guess it's at uh, FRI. What is the work that FRI is doing in climate change? Caroline, in 30 seconds, please. <laughs> in 30 seconds. <laughs> um, sorry, so I was switching language as you were talking so that I could hear the initial question. So I hope I didn't miss anything. Uh, but regarding what we are doing on, on climate change, right? Um, so uh, right now, we are continuing to um, use all of those learnings from the Scaling Her Voice project into a new project, actually, that is meant to be um, addressing uh, climate change adaptation um, through nature-based solutions in a way that is um, inclusive and is promoting gender equality. And that is also a new project that is funded by Global Affairs Canada. Uh, and it will still be going on for another four years. And so at the moment, we are in the process of all, building all of those consultations, those momentum with key stakeholder groups and understand what are the needs of the communities at the moment, what are the climate change adaptation solutions that are locally available for us in a way that also promotes gender equality. Um, and we will be, uh, we've started programming on that front as well. So that is a very interesting time for us. Um, so this is definitely something that we have been looking into. Even the Scaling Her Voice project had some elements of climate change adaptation. Really what we are doing is looking at what are the needs at the moments of the communities right now, um, depending on, on which front it is and aiming to have strategies available for them and real-time information so that they know what to do to adapt to the environments um, in a way that is you know, anchored in their local realities.
Euh, merci beaucoup, Caroline. Euh, je vais Thanks mettre... Merci, Dr. Caroline. I will go now to Maimuna, uh, which is uh, for a question which is coming uh, from Rwanda. And uh, this question is about uh, work done with uh, local radio stations. Uh, so Rita is asking if there are some, for example, radio drama to, for uh, farmers to address some of the issues. So Maimuna, this question is for you. So thanks for this question. We have our own uh, programs. We have uh, a six series of uh, programs. For example, we have a radio drama where communities could discuss uh, some of the uh, practices. And uh, these uh, programs were really appreciated by the communities. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Maimuna. I think I'll direct these two questions to Russ Mont, uh, Program Manager of Farm Radio International in Ghana. And the question is uh, coming from Arika David. Uh, Arika is saying, for sure, women need empowerment for them to improve their livelihood. What can we do as journalists to help them in addition on highlighting them? And uh, another question, from Gaye for Rosmont. Uh, Gaye wants to know if uh, the good practices and lessons learned the same among women farmers and uh, women from the animal husbandry sector. Uh, are they the same, actually? Okay, thank you very much um, for the questions. Um, for what women, uh, what radio stations or radio hosts or journalists can do to help empower um, women. And um, I would say that they can use, they, they have a bigger platform and they can use their platform to actually empower them by ensuring that they amplify their voices on all their radio programs and also getting closer to them to know what their issues are and then using the opportunity they have as a as as journalists to bring these um, issues to bear so that policymakers and the entire public or the general public can know about it and by doing this they would go a very um, they would help women um, to diversify on the issue of whether women um husband, women who are into animal husbandry and those into crops as to whether they have the same opportunity. Here in Ghana, um, I can only speak for Ghana and not the other countries that this project was implemented. We focused okay. more on nutrition and food security. We realized that most women were more into crops than into animal husbandry. Even if they were animal husbandry, it was more to do with on subsistence basis and also to supplement the nutrition that they have at home. Um, we didn't delve deeper in to know whether they do them on commercial basis or not, but this is what I can say. So we didn't do a lot of study concerning animal husbandry, but it was more towards um, crops and then food security. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, Rosman. There's a question from Dauda Amadou. I'm going to uh, give the answer straight forward. Uh, yes, uh, Dauda, the fund for the project are coming from our funders. And uh, for Ali Katolika, we want to know uh, what are the strategy put in place in improving women livelihood in agriculture. I, I think uh, most of the panelists already gave uh, how the strategies, uh, what are the strategy put in place. So uh, for more information, I think at the end, we are going to give you our contact address, our email address, partnership email address and information email address. And if you want to know more about Farm Radio International, don't hesitate to send us an email 
and we will give you send you back the answer right away. So I'm going to hand over to Caroline once again uh, for the, a conclusion to this uh, webinar. Hi, Caroline. Oui, OK. Merci beaucoup, Martin. Um, Thanks, uh, Martin. Uh, the Scaling Her Voice project was not uh, as simple as uh, you can think, but uh, it was a project which uh, allowed us uh, to uh, go through various uh, strategies and uh, we learned a lot from it. And uh, we have been able to see how we are collaborating with the local communities and also see how we can empower women in a better way. So, and uh, this uh, project uh, will help us uh, see how we can share in a better way the learnings we got throughout uh, our various interventions. How can also we make sure uh, women are more heard? So uh, the basic and the fundamental learning from this project is uh, for us to see how we can uh, find ways to make sure that women are heard more and also that uh, they have a way and a say in their own development. And uh, I will also take the time to see how uh, we can make sure uh, the food security and equality are improved. And to conclude, I will take time to thank our colleagues which help us make sure that this event is old, Taras and all the team of the communication. Thanks to Martin and also thanks to our translators. I would also like to thank our guest, Noura Young, Francoise Koulibaly, Alimata Konate, Rosemond, Maimuna, and Adeinka. And it was really interesting to learn and hear your perspective. And thanks to Global Affairs Canada and the Government of Canada for making this project possible. And uh, I take uh, this opportunity to really thank our teams uh, for implementing this project in all the countries, uh, including Sekwedrago, Lamin Togula, Rosetta Atiso, and Marcel Yanugo. Thanks for your creation and thanks for all the challenges you overcome. Thank you so much, Cameroon. Thank you so much uh, to all the participants and see you soon. Thank you.